Derivatives of inverse trigonometric functions, level 2. All right, let's jump straight to some examples. Differentiate the expression y equals 1 over inverse sine of x. One of the common errors in dealing with inverse trigonometric functions is the notation itself. Many students believe that the expression for sine inverse represents the reciprocal of that function. This is a common mistake, and make sure you don't fall for it. This is why we have a second way of expressing inverse trigonometric functions, by calling it arc sine as opposed to sine inverse or inverse sine. The proper way to mathematically represent the reciprocal of a function is as follows. So in this side example, sine of x is raised to the power of negative 1, which is the same thing as 1 over sine of x, which is equal to cosecant of x. Just keep a side note that the negative 1 on the, on the inverse trigonometric functions does not represent an exponent, unless the entire expression is raised to the power of negative 1. So knowing that, we could rewrite the expression as follows. Sine inverse of x raised to the power of negative 1. So now that we have an indifferentiable friendly form, we take a derivative. We need to use a combination of the power rule and the chain rule. The outer function is x raised to the power of negative 1, and the inner function is inverse sine. So the derivative of y with respect to x, or y prime, is going to be equal to negative 1 times sine inverse raised to the power of negative 2 times 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So in the final expression, we have that the final derivative is equal to the negative of 1 over sine inverse raised to the power of 2 times the square root of 1 minus x squared. We can rewrite sine inverse as arc sine. Other answers are acceptable. Let's try our next one. Differentiate the expression y equals sine inverse of 2x plus 1. So here we need to apply the chain rule with the outer function equal to sine inverse of x and the inner function equal to 2x plus 1. Applying the chain rule, we have the following. 1 over the square root of 1 minus 2x plus 1 raised to the power of 2 times 2. Simplifying the expression algebraically and expanding the binomial on the bottom, we have the following. Now here we factor out a 4. And by factoring out a 4, we can take a square root of 4, which ends up being 2. And that cancels out with a 2 in the numerator, giving us the final expression to be equal to 1 over the square root of negative x squared minus x. All right, let's try the next one. Differentiate expression cosine inverse of e raised to the power of 2x. Once again, this is a perfect candidate for the application of a chain rule. The outer function is cosine inverse, and the inner function is e raised to the power of 2x. Applying the chain rule, we have that the derivative is going to be equal to negative of 1 over the square root of 1 minus e to the power of 2x raised to the power of 2 times e to the 2x times 2. So in the final expression, we have that the final derivative is equal to negative of 2 times e raised to the power of 2x over the square root of 1 minus e raised to the power of 4x. All right, let's try the next one. Differentiate expression arc tangent of arc sine of the square root of x. Here we have nested functions, so we have to use the chain rule twice. For the first chain rule, we have that the outer function is arc tangent and the inner function is arc sine of the square root of x. So applying the chain rule twice, we have that the derivative is going to be equal to 1 over 1 plus the arc sine of the square root of x raised to the power of 2 times 1 over the square root of 1 minus the square root of x raised to the power of 2 times 1 half x raised to the power of negative 1 half. We have the final derivative is equal to the following. Let's try the next one. Differentiate expression x times the arc tangent of the square root of x. So here we have a product of two different functions. One function is x, and the second function is arc tangent of the square root of x. So we need to apply the product rule. I want to let my f of x equal x, and my g of x equal arc tangent of the square root of x. So applying the product rule, we have that the derivative is going to be equal to x times the derivative of tangent inverse of the square root of x, plus tangent inverse of the square root of x times the derivative of x. Derivative of tangent inverse of the square root of x requires the use of a chain rule, along with the power rule. So taking the derivative of tangent inverse of the square root of x, we have the following. And that signifies to 1 over 2 times the quantity 1 plus x times the square root of x. And the derivative of x is just 1. So substituting the values for the derivatives, we have the following expression. And now here, x and the square root of x signify to the square root of x. So we have that the final derivative is going to be equal to the square root of x over 2 times the quantity 1 plus x plus tangent inverse of the square root of x. Alternatively, we could rewrite tangent inverse as arc tangent. Let's try the next example. Differentiate the expression arc tangent of the quantity x minus the square root of 1 plus x squared. So here we're going to use the chain rule. So applying the chain rule, we have 
the following expression. And to simplify the expression, we have the following. Expanding the binomial yields the following. Here we add expressions to have a common fraction. And over here, we simplify the expression and add like terms. And now here we factor out a 2 from the expression, and we multiply numerator and denominator. We group the term 1 plus x squared so that we can factor it out. So factoring out a 1 plus x squared from the denominator, we have the following expression. And here, the square root of 1 plus x squared minus x cancels out with the expression in the denominator, giving us the final answer to be equal to 1 over 2 times the quantity 1 plus x raised to the power of 2. Uh, let's try the final example. Differentiate the expression r of x equals e raised to the second inverse of 1 over x. We could rewrite the expression 1 over x as x raised to the power of negative 1. So here we have nested functions. So we are going to apply the chain rule twice. So applying the chain rule twice, we have the following expression. Simplifying the expression at directly, we have the following. Now here, what we want to do is add the terms by getting a common denominator, taking the square root of both the numerator and the denominator. Square root of x squared is the same thing as the absolute value of x. So this combines with the other absolute value term. And then here, what happens is that x squared over the absolute value of x squared cancel each other out. So we have that the final derivative is equal to the negative of e raised to the power of secant inverse of 1 over x over the square root of 1 minus x squared. In our next video, we're going to learn how to take a derivative of logarithmic functions.